What's up, babies? It's your boy, Michael Ridley, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for everybody who's tuned in and watched R3. Everybody who's liked, subbed, fucking commented, shared, whatever. All the help, dude, is appreciated. Uh, we love you guys here at R3. We are very, very grateful for all of our listeners, all, on average, about 75 people so far. So that's that, uh, that's a good job. That's a little bit of a dub for me. I'm very grateful that you guys are here with us. Um, I just appreciate it, all of this, all the support. And again, guys, please like, subscribe, comment, tell two homies to tell two homies because we're just here having a good time. We're just a couple yeah. of dudes. Email us stuff too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be very. Uh, we'd be very grateful if you emailed us at radio ridley radio at gmail.com just send me anything and i'll riff on it maybe we'll add it to the podcast we're still figuring it out funny stuff funny stories give us give us numbers to prank call oh yeah numbers to prank call or if you guys need any any advice i'm like really good at giving advice and not taking it myself so yeah that's it i just wanted to chime in really quick before we started this one again to say thank you to everyone who's been watching and commenting and just being a part of it i really appreciate it because you guys, uh, we're still very small, but we show a lot of promise. And uh, those of you that are watching this right now, you're on the ground floor of uh, Radio Ridley Radio Enterprises, all right? And we're going to have stock options soon. We're going to have, you know, we're going public probably within the next six months. <coughs> and I just wanted to say that we've been doing great. And uh, here's to quarter two. <coughs> It's Radio Ridley Radio with your host, Michael Ridley. Yo, what the fuck's going on? Welcome to Radio Ridley Radio. I'm your host, Michael Ridley. You already know what the fuck's going on. Today's date is April 3rd, 2024 in the great city of Austin, Texas. Oh my goodness, I'm very, uh, today's a special episode of Radio Ridley Radio because I'm coming off, I'm coming down off some motherfucking mushrooms. We've had quite a day, dude. Very good. Yeah. Very grateful for today, dude. I'm yeah. uh, coming we, to terms with the fact that I am losing my job. Yeah. That was a pretty epic mushroom phone call you had. Yeah, I got a phone call. <laughs> a company is buying out a company's buying out my company and they called me and they were basically like Yeah, we'll hire you. We have a position uh an hour and a half north of where you live. And I was just like, you know what? I think I'm good, dude. I don't know. I think I'm good. I think it's time to just do this. Don't you think, Taylor? Oh, yeah. Don't, don't you think it's time to quit goofing around and chase my dream fully? Like 100%. Go 100% full-time comedy and more episodes of R3 and more shit just to be able to have, like, I just want to have the mental capacity to do everything. <clears throat> Because I feel like for the longest time, dude, I've just been playing comedy on hard mode because I have so many responsibilities. I've had yeah. so much. I've had so much I've had to do, bro. What day job? I'm a husband. I have a dog. Pay bills. Go to work. Stay out late. Do shows. Write jokes. Produce podcasts. Yep. It's a lot. And, and then, and then on top of that, what? You got other other shit you got to deal with. Yeah, you got, you got a job. Me sure. dealing with me. Yeah, existing as myself. That's a lot. It's hard to be me sometimes. Sometimes it's <laughs> sometimes it's hard to be yourself. <laughs> you know, we live in this world where everybody puts a mask on all the time. And I'm gonna tell you right now, listeners of R3, I'm done, man. This whew, it's coming off, baby. It's too much. It's too much to live life like you're like you're doing an act. Especially with stand up. Yeah, you're doing an act, but like a lot of people I gotta do I'm doing comedy differently now, dude. I'm gonna I have a different approach of how I'm gonna be doing stand up. And I've been playing with it and I've been tinkering with it, dude, and your boy's so free. I feel free, dude. Free as a bird, dude. I feel free. And I feel like creatively I can go in any direction I want, player. And I'm going to weave in and out of material and just vibe. And just be present. You know what I'm saying, folks? Sometimes you just got to be present. You can't just you can't just be autopiloting through life, brother. 
And for a period of my time, a period of time, it felt like I was just on autopilot for real. And shit's not, that's not, you're dead at that point. Yeah. Like, let's be present. Let's be here. Put the damn phone down. Put the PSP down, son. We're having dinner. <laughs> Come take a seat. Here, grab your sister's hand. All right, grab your, grab your Meemaw's hand. Let's put our heads down and pray. Thank you, Lord, for this R3 that we are about to receive. <laughs> we pray for tasty-ass riffs, big, juicy comedy balls, engorged, engorged. Co- <laughs> we're just full of riffs, Lord. We're just, <laughs> we're up to our eyeballs and bits and characters and fun times and conversations, and we just hope that you're here with us. As we venture into these uncharted waters, Lord, and in your name I pray, gay men. <laughs> gay men, dude. Gay men. That was the first prayer here at R3. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for being a part of that. <laughs> we went. I left work. I've been leaving work. That's the cool thing about working from home. You just leave work. I mean, the company sold. Yeah. I'm not lying anymore. And the guy told you that you were gonna weren't get, gonna get fired and he was gonna take care of you. <laughs> yeah. I flew back to train. What a dumbass. Don't ever don't ever think a company has its best interests for you, dude. I gave these people the some of the best years of my life in my hairline. Like, I don't even know if like going bald is in my is in my my dad is seventy five and has a full head of hair. There's no way. This the, the, the I gave this guy my hairline in the best years of my life, and a lot of my mental sanity went to this place. And it and it and it has been ruining me creatively. And it's been putting me under a lot of mental pressure that I feel like not a lot of other people have. Like a shitty job, um, like a well, not a shitty job. I wouldn't say it's a shitty job because I, it's a good job. It's just the stress and the people that you're around in that in the industry that I'm in. It's just it can be stressful. I don't think a lot of people have that. That's what I meant, like, doing comedy on hard mode. Like, comedy is already so... Like, doing stand-up can be quite stressful. Like, getting there, you know, writing the bits, memorizing, getting it all down, being confident on stage. All that stuff is very... Like, oh, there's a reason why, at the highest level, this pays so much. Because, bro, it is... (laughs) Comedy is kind of hard! Jesus! Jesus Christ, brothers! It's fucking hard, dude. Comedy is hard. Especially when you're a dumbass. <laughs> Comedy's so hard when you're an idiot. Oh, uh, it is. And then I'm like, I'm like, a, it's crazy because, like, in my mind, in my mind, I'm still, a, I'm still, I'm still, but to me, a child in my mind. But I'm doing all this big boy shit now. You're a grown boy now. Venture off, get married, and have a dog. Very grateful. Like, yeah, I have a. My life is dope, man. Life's good. I told that, I, I don't know. I'm just grateful that we get to do comedy and shit and have fun and do this. Hell yeah. This is so fun. It's good. Mushrooms, man. Should be should be having me introspective as hell. You're getting hella introspective in this motherfucker. Talking about life and shit. Talking about life and shit. This is, the mask is off. You getting... 100% Ridley. You getting that raw Ridley. All up in all up inside you. I'm all up I'm all in your brain. I'm in your guts. I'm in your lower intestine. I'm flowing through your bloodstream. I'm in your mind. Why why do you sound like Bernie Mac? I'm in your mind. I'm <laughs> Listen. Here's the deal. <laughs> Dude, I haven't done Bernie Mac in so long. I used to do a fire Bernie Mac. I think you did Bernie Mac episode 2 or 3. Really? Driver don't make the car. Yeah. Car make the driver. Fucking Bernie Mac. <laughs> but nah, dude. I was telling my wife, I was like, yo, you know, there's so many people who would kill to have what I have. Just good friends. Something they're passionate about. Like, to know their dreams. That's crazy that, like, there are just people who live that don't know what the fuck they're supposed to be. You just spend their whole lives not knowing what the fuck they're supposed to be. And now, dude, we got all this. We got all these cameras and all these lights and shit. This this blows my mind that every week I get to come in here, and then there there are fucking people on the other side of this camera. <laughs> there are people watching this shit, and they're like, "Yo, this is good. It's really good." <laughs> like I walk down the street, 
And people are like, yo, keep going. I really like it. That fucking makes me feel amazing. That's validating. Because a job, brother, I'm going to tell you right now, man, that, that job, working for the man, shit, that, that's only going to get you so much. Working for the man's only going to get you so much. I'm going to tell you right now, if life's a gamble, I'm putting all my money on me, baby. <laughs> putting all my motherfucking chips on me. Let me put, I'm, putting all, I'm putting all my money on yellow. <laughs> <laughs> put all $38 on yellow, please. Put it all. <laughs> yeah, we're broke now. That's, that's something I'm coming to terms with is like, bro, I don't have no more them comforts. Comfort is going to go. I'm going to sacrifice comfort. I'm going to sacrifice comfort for uh, for creativity. Well, I've had everything I've needed. And I get lazy. I, like, lose the desire to make shit. Got to have that fire under you, boy. Yeah. Got to have that. The dogs got to have a little bit of fight in them, dude. Everybody thinks I live this cushy-ass life. Because I do. But it won't. It won't always this nice. It won't always this good. We come from humble beginnings, dog. I don't even know why. Like 10 years ago, I was riding a bus to go to open mics, and I just had no idea why I was doing that. I had no idea. Like, why the fuck? The, the mic would start at 8. The open mic would start at 8, and the bus wouldn't get there until 8. So I'd, like, show up at 9, and they'd be like, Please, I don't have any other way. Could I go up and then go up and, like, bomb my ass off? I was like, for, like, two or three years I did that. A little crush here and there, but then again, it was, like, three years in. Crushing in an open mic. What was that? Were you drinking? Oh, yeah, I was drinking heavy, too. You think you would have been quick, quicker than two years of, like, getting to a point where you could kill it? If you were not drinking, like you think it would have taken less time? I think it. I think it took a lot. I think it took a lot of me to just to get comfortable. A lot of drinking helped me get comfortable. And we spent what the last, I spent the last year and some change learning how to do stand up without drinking. And I think I can confidently say now at that point I'm at that point now, where I can be as funny and free. And vulnerable, sober, is when I was drinking. Mm -hmm. And it's better. Like, people, like, Chelsea, Chelsea, my wife, she's seen it. She saw me at peak cranking out the shittiest 45 minutes you've ever seen. But, God, there were some big pops in that shit, dude. I would just start spinning a yarn, drunk as a bitch. And they're like, yo, this guy is just getting drunk and drunk and, and dr like, just drunk. Do you think they were laughing at you mm -mm. more? They were laughing with you. No, I had them. I wasn't that drunk, but drunk enough to just be, I wouldn't go on stage shit house, but it definitely was like I needed to have like a drink or two before I went up just to fucking, and then afterwards we would just slam bruise, boy. I'm the opposite way. I can't do, I can't do stand up drunk. I've d I've ha I d did it like two times at Creek where I had like met that one night you gave me your spot because you were like, I'm tired. I'm going to go home. And I didn't think I was going up. Because I was like, there's no way I'm getting up. And so I had already started drinking with Lemaire. And then and then you're like, here, I'm going to give you my spot. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go up. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, you can be close. Dicks or shit. And I was just, just like, can't do my sh I can't pull my material out of my brain when I'm fucking at all drunk. Yeah. So at that point, for me, it was more of like weaving in and out of material and then just randomly throwing out topics and riffing and talking about whatever I felt about in that moment, or however I felt that day, or whatever I was talking about. And now I'm doing that. I can, but I can, I can, uh, yeah, I can articulate myself sober. More powerful. Yeah. Yo, shout out to mushrooms, bro. That shit cured my alcoholism. Mushrooms cured my alcoholism for real. I don't even really be wanting to drink. You just do them, do them shrooms once in a while, boy. Get them get you, things. Get them things in you. You'll be right. It was weird. Yeah, so what? I just walked away from work, went to your house, got that phone call, getting acquired by another company, and it's just like, man, I, I don't even want to do this, bro. That doesn't even sound enticing to me. 
I'd rather be unemployed, I think is what I said to him. Yeah, you're like, I'm gonna be honest with you, dude. I don't, <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna drive well, an hour didn't and a half sound to like, make less money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't wanna I don't wanna drive an hour and a half to make less money, bro. Let's be honest, dude. Come on, dude. This is horrible. And what did he say to you? I'm essentially getting fired is what I said yeah, to him. I was yeah. like, I'm essentially getting fired is what you're telling me because I'm not willing to do that. I'd rather be unemployed. And he was like, well, uh, he was. He didn't sound like he wanted to hire me over the phone anyways. He's, like the, the whole time I was on the phone with this guy, it sounds like he's calling me because somebody called him and told him to call me. Yeah, this, give this guy a job. We have to give this guy We a have job. to give this guy a job. No, you don't. Yeah. Let's not waste any time here, folks. You're like, there's one right by my house, dude. Yeah, there's one. <laughs> there's literally one five minutes down the street from my house. I mean, you're telling me there's no. We we have work at home, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make got, my own work. We got work at home, dude. It's like, it's not money anymore. It's time, baby. It's about a legacy. That's what my dad. My dad didn't understand. He was like, my dad would ask me to like do a favor for him or whatever, and I'd be like, Dad, it's not. It's not gas money it's it's gonna take two hours <laughs> like it what <laughs> <laughs> dude you're 75 brother boomers time. with no concept of time Time, yeah he's so Where? old what Where? Where? i'm like yeah dude that's how you're that's why you're 75 like that because you're like i knew huh? let time pass you by time slipped through your fingers <laughs> yeah Pop -pop? yeah me and pops he's a wacky guy I don't want to talk about him. No. You went to the dentist. I did. I did go. Uh, dude, it's so funny. I went to the dentist. I went to the, Here's the thing. I've never have, like, a not awkward time at the dentist. Like, last time I went to the dentist before I moved to Texas, we, it was like an all-lady dentist. I don't know what it is about dentistry, but it's, like, usually just always women. Why is it always women sticking their fingers sticking in their mouth? fingers in my mouth? Like, give me, give me the, I need the touch of a man. <laughs> I don't, there's certain things like, uh, <laughs> I, certain things I like. I like men's fingers in my mouth. Why? <laughs> why you got this lady's little fingers in my mouth, picking around, tugging on stuff in there? Like, what the hell are you doing in there? But now, dude, I, last time I went, dude, it was some, some fucking dentistry in Virginia. They were talking to me like I was a little boy, dude. It was so cringe. I hated it. I went in there, and she's like, <laughs> this bitch looks at me and goes, uh, do you floss? Do you brush your teeth? How often are you brushing? And do you floss when you brush? And then, like, the doctor came in or the dentist came in, and the lady who was talking to me about that earlier, she was like, hmm, yeah, he doesn't floss. And his gums are bleeding a little bit. He's got he's got some bloody gums. He doesn't like to floss. I'm like, what the fuck, bitch? When do I get to go in the little treasure chest at the back? <laughs> when do I get my little paper airplane and Dora the Explorer stickers? <laughs> Fucking 29 years old at this time. I'm like a grown man. I'm a balding Asian man. And you're talking to me like I'm a little boy. <laughs> well, because I don't like to floss, bitch. No, I don't like to floss. It hurts. It hurts my fingertips. So I use the I use the little floss picker thing, and they say you shouldn't use that. Well, fuck you. It makes sense. <laughs> they say brush your teeth twice a day. I brush my teeth twice a month. Talk to the dentist. I went to the dentist here in Austin. You know what he said? Immaculate oral hygiene. It's all a lie, folks. Stop brushing your teeth. It's clogging your penal gland. It's it's, it's the penal gland is the gland in your brain that connects you to the Lord. And fluoride, which is found in toothpaste, blocks that gland. So brushing your teeth, what are you, you going to brush your teeth or do you want to talk to Jesus Christ? We're on mushrooms, folks. We're on Amazonian mushroom pills right now. That's what they're called, Amazonians. <laughs> Turn into InfoWars quick, dude. Dude. The globalists are just Nympho Wars, dude. Nympho Wars. Nympho Wars. <laughs> Nympho. Yeah, don't, don't brush your teeth. The globalists want you to brush your teeth. It's all a scam. It's all big... It's all a it's all a scam. It's all it's all propaganda from big gums. Big tooth. So yeah, it's all big tooth propaganda. This is all it's very obvious, you know, four out of five <laughs> dentists. Four out of five dentists were paid to say this. Let's be honest, yeah. folks. There's a conspiracy there's a conspiracy and it revolves around brushing your teeth. It's all fake.
Four out of five. Those are mob numbers. Yeah, those are fucking. Those, those are, are mob yeah. Those guys had a gun held to the back of their heads when they were checking off that approval thing at the ADA. How it feels to chew five gum. <laughs> Sign it. Sign that shit. But no, yeah, the new dentist was it was chill. The new dentist in Austin, they were chill. The like a Korean guy. I was like, nice. I was a little worried at the beginning. I was like, ooh, an Asian. Asian guy, wait, we're good at stuff like this. Never mind. <laughs> It'd be different if, like, you walked in and your dentist was just, like, <laughs> a fucking Mexican dude in a high-vibe vest <laughs> with a jackhammer. He's like, <laughs> your thief? I hear a fixie, your thief? <laughs> He's just a fucking... Dude's got a fucking... <laughs> dude's got the keys to it. He's, like, drives a skid steer into the... A cleaning your thief? <laughs> Drives a skid steer into the little operating room. It was a little dusty, crusty dentistry, though. But they did good. He he like he 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 got the tatar out of my mouth. Nice. Uh, there was a little bit of tatar in there, and I have a little bit of a uh, gums receding, or a uh, or recession is what they were calling it. So my mouth is in a recession right now, as far as the doctor's concerned. My mouth is the housing market in two thousand and eight. <laughs> For some reason, it's all falling apart. <laughs> no, my teeth are great. Bing, bing. Strong. I have these. I've got, I've got these strong Filipino monkey genetics, right? So my people have been chewing off the husks of coconuts for thousands of years. It's just in my genetics. I have coconut husking genetics. We can just Filipinos are just like genetically designed to crawl up a coconut tree and pluck a nut. And just <laughs> sink their teeth into it. And peel it. R peel the hairs right off. This is true. Yes. I read a Filipino culture book in school, and it was one of the things was coconut husking. And there are videos of people, there are videos of Filipinos husking coconuts with efficiency. It's really, it's almost, it's almost barbaric, dude. It's crazy how quick these guys are peeling these coconuts, dude. They're just going ham. So I think that. I have I've got those strong, strong teeth genetics. I don't know what it is about my teeth, but they are crazy strong. Crazy strong, dude. I can bite into a blow pop. I can bite into a fucking. You know that Tootsie Pop commercial? One, two, three. I can fucking bite a Tootsie Pop on three in one piece, dude. I can one shot that motherfucker, dude. Did you find it? I think so. Is this it? Meet, oh sorry. Meet Buko King, the world's fastest coconut husker. Yes. What the fuck is my brain? Yes. Going by the name of Buko King, this man lives on the beautiful island of Bohol in the Philippines. Philippines mentioned. Hey, putang ina mo, Philippines, number one coconut husking, fastest in the world, biting, Dude, biting the coconut. Crazy. Look how fast he's going! Sus Mario Sep! Look at. Oh my god! Sus Mario Sep, he's chewing and chewing! Look at those fucking Filipino chompers go, folks. That's what I got in my mouth. <laughs> we look related. That looks like me. Holy <laughs> shit. I am Buko King. Dude, those coconuts. Look at this are guy. Fire, dude. That looks like you. That's crazy. Yeah. It's probably, dude. That's what I'm saying. We all look, 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 look at look at the mouth. Look at his mouth. Look at the teeth. Hey, Sus Mario Sep, same tip. Strong Filipino tip, dude. Kababayan. Think about it. He was over there smashing, smashing all that coconut puss, and you, this is your real dad. You don't have a white Whoa. dad, dude. You that's don't have my, a white dad. That's my real dad. That's your fucking dad. I'm the Buko Prince. <laughs> I'm the Buko Prince. Dude, he looks... Yo, I gotta start going to the gym. Look at his arms. That's just like standard Filipino strength. That guy's... Look at his arms. Look that's at him go. crazy. He's a savage. I knew I wasn't wrong on that. I remember reading in a book, like... 
Husking coconuts is like a, is a means of survival. <laughs> Look at this lady's face right here. She's like, hey, he's... Look at this guy. He's eating those coconuts might be best. <laughs> she's getting he's, she's getting rizzed up by this dude's coconut husking skills. That's Guys, welcome to Radio Ridley Radio. This is the number one live pod... <laughs> Wait, no, it's not. This is the number one <laughs> recorded podcast in Austin, Texas. It's the, the number one... Uh, unedited podcast in Austin, Texas. We could edit it, but that's gay. Raw, filtered. Raw. Oh, you're getting filtered, that. I you're mean. getting that raw Ridley today, boys. Yeah. So yeah, he said I had strong teeth. It's in my jeans. Stop brushing your teeth. It's not good for you. Fuck brushing your teeth, dude. Eat ice cream. Go to bed. Be a man. <laughs> Eat ice cream. Go to bed. Be a man. Shit your pants at four in the morning after eating too much ice cream. Be a man. <laughs> Wake up. Wonder why you feel like shit. Be a man. Eat more ice cream anyways. Yeah, what? We had quite a day, man. We took, went on a walk. Took a little, took one jeezy of shrooms and then went on a walk. And then the walk was chill. We went to, uh, where else? Oh, we, we went around. We went to a, you took me to Little Mexico for some reason. Like at the peak of my mushroom trip, you're like, yeah, let's go in the store. It's a Mexican store, and I don't know what it was, but, like, they were scared of me. <laughs> they were scared of me. I guess I look scary. It's because they can't tell if you're Latino or not. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> I'm in that uncanny valley of should I speak English or Spanish? I'm like, good, stay on your toes, because I will. I fuck with them. I, like, phase in and out of Spanish and English. They think I'm really good at speaking Spanish, but the reality is I'm just switching back to English when I forget what the word is in Spanish. It's quite a tactic. And then really throw them off and go, Churigo? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, just like, like, just, I don't know, so say something in Korean. Or yeah. Something. yeah. Chung ho. <laughs> yeah. Churigo? <laughs> Saran <laughs> They're like, whoa. Watashi wa no digo so. Genki desu kai na. Like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Why is there an anime villain inside of our Mexican store right now? I thought you were Guatemalan. I could be Guatemalan. You could. See. <laughs> Look, that's me, Guatemalan. See. <laughs> Dude, I, I wrote this new joke. <laughs> I wrote this new joke. I wish you were there. I wish you were there. Uh, you would have laughed so hard at this. There's like some old lady in the front of this show I was doing. She's in. I was at, I was doing a show. There's an old lady in the front row, and I, it was a it was a show on Easter, like an Easter brunch show. Oh yeah. And they were killer. Oh, the, the vibes were immaculate this last weekend, dude. I did two shows, same menu. The vibes were immaculate. They were so chill and so funny. So this old lady's up front, and I look at her, and I go, I like you a lot. I look at her right in her eyes. I go, I like you a lot. You remind me of my Mimo. I feel like you got... I feel like you've got a multitude of ceramic frogs in your house. <laughs> Doing various activities. I feel like you got you got little frog statues in your apartment. They were loving it. And I go, uh, <laughs> like I'd look on your, you go look on her coffee table, and there's just a frog. <laughs> you go look at her coffee table. There's just just a frog fishing. Just, <laughs> and then you look on a book. You look on a bookshelf. I'm sitting in the stool. I'm sitting in the stool. <laughs> Just chilling in the stool. And then you, sh you look on our bookshelf, and there's just a frog playing banjo. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, the frog with a bit of straw hanging out of his lip, pushing a, wheel a wheelbarrow. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. That is amazing. Why do I remember those, dude? My grandma had a little frog statue that would play My Sharona. <laughs> it's like a full frog band that would play music. Yeah. Look at that guy. He's always doing some gardening. Why are frogs always... They're always in the garden, dude. <laughs> 
I told that lady she looked like she had those in her house. And the room just exploded, (laughs) dude. I roasted this old ass lady, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Bro, that is such an oddly family was like, oh, he's right. You two have those ceramic frogs on the bookshelf. Bro, that's crazy that that is just like a such a dude. That is such a fine curated roast. Now that is a joke. Now I want that because oh, that's so oddly nostalgic and so specific that and so true. You know what I mean? Dude, look. Yeah, <laughs> playing a banjo. <laughs> Why do old people? That's crazy because we're gonna be old someday. <laughs> And there's just going to be a generation of people being like, yeah, my grandpa's just got a shit ton of Legos. Yeah, pop, pop. Uh... My pop pop's got a bunch of Funko Pops. <laughs> yeah. It's so cringe. Why did Milena Boomers, why did Milena Boomers collect Funko Pops? We're going to be Milena Boomers? That's crazy, dude. There's just going to be old people going dead ass. <laughs> old people saying eating ass. Yeah, and then I ate your grandma's ass. <laughs> and the rest is the rest is history. Yes. She was looking uh, bad as a bitch that night. We, I met her on 6th Street in the voodoo room. And she was twerking up a storm on the shaft of my penis. So, I got her IG and then I slid in the DM and... <laughs> And in less than a fortnight, I was clapping those cheeks dead ass for real, for real. And you know, I straight up busted. No condom, I was hitting the joints raw. And thus your daddy was born. So you know, just grateful to be a young motherfucker out here getting it, you know? We just... We were crazy. She started topping me off in the back of the Uber. That's gross. There's going to be old people that talk like that. That's going to be crazy. You could say your granddaddy had the riz. Yeah. Oh, I rizzed up your grandmama <laughs> back in the early 20s. It was the peak. It was the, it was the, the election was around the corner, and they were chefing up a new COVID for real. They were in the stew, chefing up a new strain of the vid. (laughs) So I shot my shot with your grandma, and she popped that pussy for a real. Little did I know she had an OnlyFans. Oh, God. (laughs) You're going to be able to dox people's grandmas. Be like, yo, look at your grandma's tits when she was 23. She was popping that pussy on the fans for real. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy, dude. That there's going to be a generation of people who's like, yo, look at your grandma's nudes from when she was 24. Yo, dude, your grandma's tits used to be Dude, sick. your grandma was hot, dude. Here's a video of her fucking a dildo that's that was suction cup to the wall. Yeah, it's shaped like a <laughs> dragon's egg. Here's a video of your grandma fucking a corn cob dildo in 2023. 20, here's, here's. Yeah, those were hard times. That's wild. Dude, we live in Babylon, bro. <laughs> so weird. These are the end times. So last summer we had locusts. A bunch of locusts came to Austin and fucking uh they just died. Thousands and thousands of crickets everywhere, dude. Now we're gonna have the eclipse. Dude, I swear to God, if this eclipse happens and then I just see like a red ring around the eclipse and a portal opens, I'll be like, yeah, called it. (laughs) Saw that coming a mile away. (laughs) Fucking demons start coming in from the portal. I'm like, yeah, we got demons now. The next COVID scam is going to be like hologram uh, vampires come out of the blood moon. Pretty much. (laughs) Shit like that. Like at anything, anything now, nothing surprises me. I don't think uh I don't think a zombie apocalypse will ever happen. Doesn't make sense. I know there are probably bio 
weapons companies like Umbrella Corporation, like really trying to figure out how to do that. I would not fare well in a zombie apocalypse. You already saw that today on our walk. <laughs> I got about 15 seconds of sprint. Like, if you played as me in a video game, you would be frustrated with how much, yo, it's got to, God damn it, he's already out of energy. You'd be a heavy build. Yeah, you'd ha yeah, heavy build but no strength. That <laughs> sucks. So like you just have this character that can only run for 15 seconds and then he does like the character he does the damage of like a light character. What the fuck is this? But man, he's good in dialogue. Yeah, his you got, the, you got the you got Yeah, the but his charisma. fucking charisma and luck stat are like through the roof. So <laughs> Most of the time, we don't even fight. We just make the person laugh, and then they forget all about it. We just make the person <laughs> laugh, and then give us all their gold. Yeah, he gives, yeah, he's, he, yeah. So this character like has the ability to sing a silly little song, and then somehow people give him money for it. Crazy game. Yeah, and he's going bald. He just talks them into killing themselves, his enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're gay. Do it, pussy. You won't. <laughs> No balls. 20 bucks says you won't. <laughs> Gay dude says what? <laughs> just, yeah, he just bullies them. It's crazy. <laughs> he just schoolyard bullies them. He's no fighting. He's just grappling. Yeah, he doesn't have no punch, no kick. He only has grapple and hold. So he can just squeeze you real long. So just, just grab a motherfucker just squeeze him. Funniest thing about the walk was how <coughs> how hard I was trying to get you to wear shorts, borrow some shorts from me, because I knew you were gonna want shorts. I didn't want to wear I was shorts. Like you're gonna want shorts, and you were like, no. I was like you didn't want you're gonna want shorts, and then like Dude, my balls were baking, boy. <laughs> yeah, the second we got out there, man, we should have had those shorts. Hey man, we should. You we were like forty. We we're like forty minutes into the walk. I'm like, yo, Taylor, just turn around, and go get these shorts, man. <laughs> you're like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I was like, nah, I'm kidding, but yeah, this sucks. <laughs> This is horrible. I should listen to you. Like, why does this guy always want me to change into shorts? That's what my brain went. I'm like, I'm not changing into shorts. This guy's always kind of, this guy's always trying to tell me what to do. I'm a fucking dumbass. <laughs> my brain was like, stop telling me what to do, dude. Man, I should have did what he told me to do. I should have took his <laughs> it's advice. Like rebellious child energy, dude. I don't know why, man. I don't like being told what to do. That's why she never told. That's why Chelsea never told me to stop drinking. Because she knew if she did, it would just get worse. So it got to a point to where I was like, what am I doing, dude? I, like, held her. I held Chelsea. I remember, like, I don't know. I came to realize I came to realize how much I was drinking and how much I was hurting myself. I was hugging Chelsea, and I was like, man, thank you so much for being so patient and loving and kind. Because I was fucking killing myself, dude. I was unaliving myself every day with a 12. This is a new bit I've been doing on stage. I was like, yeah, I used to have a hardcore drinking problem. Yeah, I used to drink 12 White Claws a day, which is the gayest way to be an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I was just bloated and full of bubbles all the time, dude. I was just always bloated and red because my body... My body can't process alcohol because I'm Asian, so I'm just full of bubbles and red and drunk. Like, it was a keep nightmare. Your, keep your voice down. His breath smells like black cherry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, Michael would come home, and I could smell the mango on his breath. <laughs> I could smell the mango white claw on his breath. It smelled like cat piss. Mango white claw tastes and smells like cat piss, dude. It does. It's so fucking gross. And I would slurp them things down because I'm f Filipino. I love mango. Just give me mango everything. Mango. Give me a coconut dusk. Yeah. And, but, dude, yeah, I was just, I don't know. I was just talking about, like, being real on stage is what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. just talking about what I know. Like, why the fuck am I going to research and write jokes about stuff that I have no idea what I'm talking about? Why even try to do jokes about what the fuck? Dude, talk about what you know. Talk about what the fuck I know. And I know addiction. I know uh, going to jail, being homeless. I know being treated like shit for being uh, Asian. I know about um, just breaking all stereotypes as an Asian because I'm not a good Asian. <laughs> I'm like the worst. 
I ain't never even husked a co- coconut in my life, Taylor. I've never once husked one coconut. I'm like not even good at. I'm just. You're, you're di- a fun Asian. Yeah, I'm different. Different for sure. Fuck school, dude. School is gay. <laughs> school has always been gay. You're not a school agent? No, I'm not good at school. And it's not that I'm dumb. It's like it's like going to school was like being handed a square to put in the square hole. And then I go. And then they're also and then they pass me at the triangle to go in the triangle hole. And then I'm just like, I've taken all the shapes and I'm like, zoom, 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 zoom. Can I sleep now? No, you have to stay awake until all the other kids are done putting this, their respected shapes in their respective holes. <laughs> Why? I should be able to sleep. Or I can I go up and can I go take a piss? I'm a genius. May I may I take a nap now? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not like these smooth-brained assholes. And then, okay, we've completed the tasks. Let's fuck with the teacher now. <laughs> Let's fuck with this lady. Let's really make her get her money's worth. Let's make her earn her her pay today. God, I was a nuisance. I was such a dickhead, bro. I was such a bad kid. I was such a bad student. You're still a little stinker, dude. I am a little stinker. I, that's another thing. I've 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 brought back the mis- mischievous nature. I think it's okay to be uh, to have a little mischief here and there. Well, we were at Chipotle last week, and some lady was some lady or thing. I don't know what it was. Man, woman, unidentified human being zonked in the Chipotle. Oh, we, we weren't even at Chipotle. I just had to go piss, and I walk into the Chipotle, and this fucking lady or whatever, somebody's passed out. There's just a person just fucking. Just dead in the Chipotle. Just fucking taking a Fentanap. Just fucking zonked. Zonked on perks in the fe- in the fucking Chipotle. I walk in, it's quiet as a mouse in there. <laughs> the people the people in line ordering are like, can I get a um <laughs> let me get a uh, let me get a barbacoa burrito? Yeah, I'm gonna do white People eating. Yeah, corn salsa. Yeah, corn salsa, please. People eating. Trying not to laugh. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Quiet as fuck. Sleeping beauty over here, dude. Just fucking dead in the Chipotle. I go in, take a piss, go in the bathroom, take a piss, come out. Still knocked out. On my way out. Open my IG. Let's show the people on the podcast in case you guys haven't been. I'm doing this new thing on my Instagram where I just document the homeless people of Austin because they've got to be stopped. You guys already know R3 is not a pro homeless, pro homeless podcast. We have I've I used to be homeless. All right. And this this shit is crazy. There's a time and a place to do things and sleeping in in a Chipotle is not one of those things. Go find a nice apartment complex hallway to sleep in. Go go. Crawl under the tire of a truck to stay warm at night. Do something, but don't bother the the hardworking folks at the at the local Chipotle. Scroll down. Right there. Is that a dude? No, I don't know. I don't know what it was. It was a very masculine woman, maybe. Chipotle shorty zonk. Shorty was zonk. Shorty zonk at the Chipotle. The two Edgars in the booth Shorty eating. zonked at the Chipotle. Wake up! Wake your ass up in the Chipotle! Wake your ass up in the Chipotle. <laughs> she did. Dude, she went like this. She was like this. She was like... All right, say wake your ass up. Wake your ass up in the Chipotle! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Here we yeah. go. I'm going to try to freeze frame it. Yeah. I got ready. You were like, this is right after you said, wake your ass up. Here, here, here. I'll, I'll act it out as I hear it. All right, ready? Wake your ass up. <sighs> <sighs> what? What? 
<laughs> Look at her. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Who has awoken me from my slumber? In the Chipotle. Phone on the table, suitcase in tow. The Chipotle sweets. Who has who has who has awoken? Who has awoken the guardian of Chipotle? <laughs> who has awoken me from my thousand year slumber? <laughs> who dare wake me? Who dare? The smell of barbacoa in the air. I can smell. I can smell the barbacoa. Who dare awaken the guardian of Chipotle? Me, bitch. Wake your ass up. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Who dare awaken me from my thousand year slumber? Me, what's good? What's really good, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I'm up the pole on you. They call me Alarm. That's so Alarm. <laughs> it's your boy Alarm. Wake your ass up. <laughs> New character unlocked. It's your boy, A. Alarm. Wake your goofy ass up. It's Radio Ridley Radio. New character unlocked. I was trying to see if we could find the voice. Of new, Mike. new, 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 new character unlocked. Do, do the wake your ass up with the megaphone. Wake your ass up. Wake your goofy ass up. It's Radio Ridley Radio. It's your boy, Alarm. That's funny as fuck, actually. <laughs> Alarm? Yeah, dude. What a crazy name. <laughs> that sounds like a corporation writing a black character <laughs> that doesn't know black people. Yo, it's your boy, Alarm. I'm always on time. I'm always on time. <laughs> and I can swim. <laughs> and I raise my son. And I pay child support. And I have good credit. <laughs> and I'm trans. And I'm and I support LGBTQ plus <laughs> lifestyles. I'm fucking with the rainbow. It's Alarm. The left's dream black man. <coughs> so funny, dude. <laughs> it's so funny that like Black Lives Matter and Trans Lives Matter, those things don't work together. <laughs> <laughs> black people, black dudes are hella transphobic. <laughs> They're like, uh. What the hell? It's so funny, dude. All right, we're, it's not that. It's not that kind of podcast today. No. I'm kind of done with like the hateful shit. Yeah, the uh the the I'm kind of done. Social I don't, politics bullshit. Social politics. Yeah, I'm done with that shit honestly. The it's world so exhausting. It, it's so exhausting. I'll make my little points here and there, but I don't want this podcast to ever be like some info war shit and right wing stuff right wing like podcasts and stuff they reach out to me a lot and i'm like dude i'm not doing those anymore <laughs> anymore i'm not doing i did one and i was like i did a jordan peterson impression on one and it was funny <laughs> you have to clean your room that's pretty good i like yours there's an entire world <laughs> This, this world that was built by men, there's a whole, there's a whole sector of men in these world, of, of men in this world, underappreciated men, who do back-breaking work every day. You have to be more Canadian, though, a little bit, everyone. You have to well. add a little bit. Here's the thing. It, just the idea of a world that's built by men and that same world turn their backs to those same men who do backbreaking work day in and day out. <laughs> so, to answer your question, yes, I think they should be able to say the N-word. <laughs> I mean, for Christ's sakes, you're building bridges. We're not, we're not social workers or dealing with people's <laughs> dealing with people's feelings. We're We're operating a fucking skid steer. You're working a crane. Yes, say it. Use as many slurs as you want as long as the bridges and the highways are built. He says bloody a lot, too. As long as the bloody highways are getting <laughs> built, who cares what slurs they say or what they... If they honor what you identify as, there's... 
There's power in running water in your house. <laughs> There's. Just think of the craziest point in Jordan Peterson's voice. Is funny as fuck. I think they should be able to say the N word. Yeah, he's like a Canadian Kermit, <laughs> yeah. almost. He's like in that same wheelhouse of yeah. Kermit. Yes, my wife's a pig. <laughs> But she's got some bloody rocking tits. <laughs> I'm a puppet. I'm Jordan Pupperton. Jordan Pupperton would be funny yeah. as shit. Yeah. Jim Henson's Jordan Peterson. Jim Henson's Jordan Peterson. That's crazy. If Muppets as a franchise wanted to go viral right now, just have Kermit Peterson. Kermit Peterson would, would be, be funny. so good. I mean, speaking. Speaking of Kermit, you should look at... Uh, Go on Instagram and type in Kermie she's, does Omegle. She's got some rocking good tits, dude. We're clipping She's that, got dude. some bloody good tits. <laughs> Here's oh, you want me to do some more Peterson? I don't care if they hop the border. They're here and they're working hard. They should be allowed to be here and support for their families. So what? They get drunk and crash into people with no car insurance. Who's gonna build the roads? They built those roads. They deserve to. Hit and run as many times as... Yeah, they... Hey, man. The Mexican dudes be hitting and running, boy. <laughs> yeah. That shit is crazy. Get that full coverage. You live in Texas, get full coverage. State minimums just went up. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. See? <laughs> I, I sorry. <laughs> you know, I just a little... It's okay. It's okay. Every time a Mexican dude gets in a car crash, have you seen those videos? <laughs> Mexican dude, like, you know those poles that they put outside of buildings so you don't crash into the mm -hmm. front door? It'd be like a Mexican dude, like, in a Sentra, just vertically up against one of those <laughs> poles, drunk as shit, covered in blood. And somebody's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, bro, with their phone? And he's just drunk as shit. He looks up and he goes, no, he's okay. He's okay. No, it's not, dude. <laughs> it's like the international sign of... Yeah, you caught me doing some stupid shit, but we're going to be all right, dude. <coughs> all right, what is this Kermit does Omegle thing you want me to look at? Uh, best of Kermit on Omegle. Yeah, it's an Instagram. It's an Instagram. <coughs> Kermit does Omegle is so funny, dude. This guy goes on Omegle with a Kermit puppet. And he does, yeah, too, does a pretty good Kermit impression. He goes, hey, what's going on? It's me, Kermit. <laughs> oh, and I love it. <laughs> okay. You guys up for a threesome? Or... <laughs> yeah, Kermit. Damn. Kermit. I'm a big fan. Thank you. I'm a really big fan. <laughs> he, flashes their, he flashes them a cucumber dick. You a fan of that? Where do you have that? You a fan on, of that? <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> you a fan of that? What's going on, bro? <laughs> Thanks for wearing a mask, bro. I don't want to get COVID on here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he rules. <laughs> Go to his Instagram page. Yo, bro, you're making me laugh. Quit it. <laughs> Wait. Sorry, man. I was just, I was <laughs> that dude was on mushrooms and was like, let's go on Omegle and he's faced with Kermit. Go to his Instagram. It's more condensed. Like his highlights are more condensed. You don't have to watch this whole video. Kermie. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Any of them, really. That one, yeah. What's up, dude? Hi. Trying to make a TikTok? A TikTok? What kind of TikTok? 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 TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> 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 He's just assaulting bad, women with a cucumber. <laughs> so yeah, that's Kermie does Omegle. It rules. I watch that for about. Followed. I watch that for about two hours every night. If I ever feel damn. <laughs> oh Look God. how amped they are. Oh, 
down here. Some goth, some goth <laughs> gifs. Oh my god, he upped the pole on him. The shark keeps skipping me. She got a big Buddha. Got it. <coughs> you thought I was feeling you? That curved me a munch. <laughs> oh, curry me. I'm Miss B. I'm what a voice actor. You are? I'm a voice actor. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Can you can you voice act something with this? <laughs> 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 My bad, Shotty. That's okay. <clears throat> helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> yeah, Kermit does Omegle rules. That's that like does well. I can't wait to watch more of those. That's yeah, so I'm surprised you didn't know about that. Uh, Kermit does Omegle is a good time, dude. Yeah. I forgot to mention what time it was when we started. How long have we been going? Uh, we're at 56 minutes, dude. Mm. Wow, that was really good. That was really smooth. It landing. was smooth. So I, I think smooth I should do... Mushroom pod. Yeah, I think I should... Guys, let me know if I should do mushrooms more often on the pod. Maybe I'll, I want one where I'm, like, really deep. I'm thinking maybe, like, take, like, three grams and just fucking just go balls to the wall. But yeah, this is a very frog-heavy episode. <laughs> yeah, I just realized we had the, uh, we had we had Jordan Peterson, we had Kermit, we had fucking ceramic frogs, we had me as a frog, dude. I'm just chilling, dude. Welcome to my lily pad. We found your dad, huh? We, we found, found my dad, dad, my coconut husking father. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I like that we do the, a, a wrap up on the each episode. I think that's fun. I think the wrap up is cool because it really a part. It's our own thing. Nobody does a wrap up. We yeah, do a wrap else up. Did, what else did we talk about? Well. It remind you know what it reminds me of kid shows. Yeah, they do that. They used to do that at the end of kid shows. We had so much fun today. And what was today's letter? I don't remember. A. <laughs> M for mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> P for psilocybin. The P is silent. It's funny that in psilocybin the P is silent. Kind of sounds the same, doesn't it? We had a lot of fun today here at Radio Ridley Radio. And we love you very, very much. Please join us again next week. I love you. Bye-bye. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. They used to really, like, indoctrinate children that way. <laughs> Just, we love you. There's a couple of people that are so stoked that the show didn't end right there. They really thought it was going to end right there. Yeah, there's some people. And are they're like, like, oh, yes, we get more. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, get you some more, baby. Send us emails. Yeah, please. Radio Ridley Radio at gmail.com. Ask me for advice. I think... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Do it whatever you want. We actually have the email address though. Yeah. <laughs> Three we weeks. Had, we were Taylor had me plug in this email, and the whole time it didn't exist. <laughs> what a silly little guy! And he didn't even need to tell you guys that. Okay. And then he just snitched on us. It'd it be was, your own people, folks. I thought it was funny. It is pretty funny. <laughs> we're for, so for unprofessional. Three or four weeks. I just had three to... or four weeks straight. Be like, dude, we have an email. No, because I was I was putting Michael Ridley comedy at gmail dot com. No, we have been saying Radio Ridley the whole time. Because I no, told I you. said Michael Ridley comedy at gmail, and you went, no, no, no. Oh, we yeah, have we, our have, own. Yeah. we have one. <laughs> and I go, oh, Radio Ridley Radio at gmail dot com. So he was he was telling me to <laughs> don't give you guys a real email email address to email. Use this fake one that Taylor hasn't even made yet. And then the other, the it other... was crazy. Somebody could have been a dick. Somebody could have been a dickhead and and got Radio Ridley Radio at Gmail, yeah. but they didn't. That was nice. We Our gotta... three baby. It was funny because I was like, oh, maybe I'll log in and see if they anybody emailed us. And it was like, not an account, dude. Yeah. You're like, yo, this like, isn't even <gasps> real. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. Dude, again, I don't fuck up all the time. That was very funny. No, you don't. You don't really make mistakes. It's crazy how, uh, you're so. You don't stress perfection, but you just somehow manifest it. But I piss it. Yeah, piss and perfect. Man, this was a fun one. I, mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, we're having a good time. Cool as a cucumber. We're going to play some Tekken after this? Oh, yeah, let's play some Tekken. We got Tekken in the studio now, dude. Oh, yeah. King Take, is OP. I'm going to grind my way up to taking the mayor down. Yeah, you got to. But he is the uh, king of games. He is. I don't think you understand his. you don't understand his power. I yeah, I suck at video games. I spent most of my life uh, playing against my autistic little brother, and then I thought that I was good at video games. I was like, no, I'm just good at beating people with learning dis disabilities <laughs> in video games. What a what a piece of shit I am. <laughs> my whole childhood was dedicated to absolutely owning this fucking <laughs> my poor poor brother. <laughs> my poor oh, poor. Oh, in your face! Eh. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, dude. <laughs> Pikachu's the best in Smash Brothers. Mm. <laughs> sweet, sweet little brother, man. Oh, going to Houston this weekend. Gonna go see my family. It's been a good. It's been a good time. I'm gonna try to get you some spots while you're there. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah, I'll hit some people up while I'm in Houston. I, can't, I gotta call my sister after this and figure out exactly when that is. And Chelsea's brother's coming to town. We're gonna show him mothership, and it's gonna be a good time. But uh, I think that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much again. Please email us stuff at Radio Ridley Radio. Anything really, just funny pictures. Anything funny. If you want to be featured on the podcast, shoot something. If you want to contribute to the show, shoot an email. Because I want to start doing, like, uh, let's check the email inbox portion of the show. Or, like, a voice-recorded like voice question or something. Voice-recorded we'll questions, anything, a dude. A good fart? It. No. Sure. <laughs> if you insist, Taylor, you've already said it. So if I go, no, don't send us farts, somebody's going to be like, mm. <laughs> oh, I got one for you in my drafts, dude. <laughs> dude, I have a whole terabyte in my house. Like and subscribe. Yeah, please. Yeah. Guys, please like and subscribe and share and fucking comment and, you know, do whatever you got to do. We have been noticing a little uptick in the algorithm. We're doing these little short form clips. We're doing little three minute segments on the YouTube channel now. Highlights of the podcast, if you will. Let us know if we're doing a good job with those. I think we're having we're doing a good job. I think we are. Too. I think we're doing great. We're Again, fun. thank you guys for listening to Radio Ridley Radio. I'm probably going to do more mushrooms next time. Yeah. And, uh, bye bye. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love you. Radio Ridley Radio. No pussy-ass shit allowed.